This is Southern Cross News with Rachel Williams. Good evening, everyone. Thousands of Tasmanians are likely feeling the pinch as rate notices are delivered across the state. But one local business owner is refusing to pay the increase following his council's decision to increase rates by 12.5%. John Briley's facing a $4,000 rise in rates for his business. That's a lot of money and we've got to find that from somewhere. The Glenorchy City Council's recent decision to make the increase of 12.5% affecting thousands. John's business has been family run for the last 35 years and has 27 staff members. To cover those extra charges, his only options are to raise prices or to reduce running costs, but he's refusing. Looking personally as a business, to pay the Glenorchy City Council, the CPI of about 2% and uh, the rest I'm not going to pay. So uh, we'll see how that goes. It is not fair, I understand that, that the people who have done the wrong thing have walked away scot-free and it's left the community and businesses to pick up the tab. Despite other councils across the state rising their rates by an average of 2% a year, Glenorchy's mayor says her council has no other choice but for residents to bear the brunt of its previous dysfunction and mismanagement. Our problem has been in the past, people haven't been willing to make those tough decisions and we now find ourselves in a dire situation. Scott Gadd runs the Hobart Showgrounds and says his bill will rise by $25,000 and passed on to those using the site. But his major concern, those in the midst of the housing crisis. Landlords are just going to pass it on, so it's effectively going to squeeze the people that can least afford it. The Glenorchy municipality is on average a lower earning area, with many of its residents already struggling and reliant on social welfare. This rate rise means these residents will have to pay an extra on average $134 a year. Where are they going to find it? They're not going to get a 12.5% increase in their wages. The council says it offers payment plans for those who are struggling. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. It wasn't that long ago that renting a house in the state's capital was an almost impossible task. Real estate agents reporting up to 100 people attending some open homes. But it now appears the market has started to slow down. An open home in Sandy Bay, ready to be rented, but just one interested party. The market very different to six months ago, when potential tenants would line up in numbers to secure a Hobart property. Over on Cryers have definitely dropped, absolutely. I'm speaking to my colleagues that I work with, I'm speaking to other agents, everyone is feeling the same. So our market starts to heat up around November and follows through until around Easter time. And after Easter, it does cool off substantially. Agents also say the market has slowed because most new leases are signed in summer. Hobart rental prices rose by 14% in one year, but fell in the last quarter. Cheaper rentals in Glenorchy today attracting 20 people to open homes. It certainly has dropped off a little bit over the past few months. Um, certainly it was a lot more busier uh, towards the beginning of the year. Well there's certainly less inquiry so there's less competition so it does make it slightly easier for tenants to secure a property in this market. The tenants union say there are less people at inspections because price rises have locked many out of the market. Hobart House is now an average of $410 per week. If they're not turning up to open homes, in many cases, it's because they simply can't afford it. Concerns raised about where people stay if they cannot afford to rent. When they see that the rent's too high, they're simply giving up and continuing to couch surf or continuing to live in rentals where they don't feel either safe or, or they aren't of a good standard. Michelle Wisby, Southern Cross News. North Launceston has shown no mercy on the Tigers in the TSL. In Brad Cox Goodger's 150th game, the Northern Bombers ran away 79 point winners. While Lauderdale's credentials are well and truly starting to show after a 59 point pounding of Glenorchy. It's easy to forget how Lauderdale was struggling to win games at the start of the season, especially after performances like today's. Ben McGuinness truly dominant up forward, he kicked seven goals, more than the entire Glenorchy team combined. Harry Parker slotted two for the Magpies, but having now won six of their past seven matches, the Southern Bombers have the TSL on notice. 
It's been a long day for the Tigers at Twin Ovals. Young guns like Sharon Egger made it look all too easy for the Northern Bombers. Up by 49 points at half time, the visitors extended their lead to 81 by the final change. The bigger bodies making it hard for the Tigers to produce any meaningful attack. North Launceston making it home by 79 points. It's been a sorry one-sided affair in today's intrastate clash at North Hobart Oval. The Northern Tasmanian Football Association smashing the Southern Football League 165 points to 13 after the SFL struggled to pull a team together for the regional clash. And Tasmania has finished on top of Division 2 in the AFL Under-16 Championships in Queensland. Today, Tasmania suffered its only loss of the tournament, going down to New South Wales and the ACT by 11 points after leading at half-time. North Monsestan's Jackson Callow starred up forward with three goals. And Richie Port remains within reach of a Tour de France crown, the Tasmanian holding his position in last night's marathon stage. At 230 kilometres, last night's stage was the longest of the tour. Even yellow jersey holder Greg Van Avermaer said he spent most of his time talking to the other riders. Not in the last kilometre though. 700 metres to go, it kicks up. Another crazed sprint to the finish. Richie Port was caught in the shuffle, neither gaining nor losing any time to remain in 11th overall. Grunewagen, he silenced the critics in the process. Stage 8 begins tonight in northern France. In Morocco, King Island's Stuart McSwain has made the podium and set a personal best in the 3,000 metres at the Athletics Diamond League. McSwain was trailing most of the field at the halfway mark before nearly hitting the lead at the final bell thanks to a gruelling push on the outside. But Ethiopian Yomuf Gagelchar exploded, finding another gear to charge into first place. McSwain snuck into third in a last gasp effort. By McSwain of Australia, who had a, a really good last 100 metres, dipping at the line there to push Tolima back into fourth. And Hugh and Rowing Club Sarah Hoare has progressed to the women's four final at the latest World Cup in Switzerland, after the Aussie crew beat the Danes in their heat overnight. Good evening. C'est le 14 juillet, or Bastille Day as we call it, and temperatures stayed close to average today. Hobart and Burnie both reached a top of 11 degrees. It was 13 in Launceston and Devonport. 13 degrees was also the top for King Island, Flinders Island, Smithton and Strawn. It was 12 at Lowhead, Friendly Beaches and Grove. 11 at St Helens, 9 at Ouse. And after a low of minus 8 overnight, it warmed up to 7 degrees at Liawini. Low-level clouds sat over the east of the state today, with a band moving over parts of the northwest. Zooming out, there was a low-pressure system bringing a band of middle-level cloud with embedded thunderstorms over the Tasman today, and a low-pressure trough crossing the Bight with a cold front approaching WA. Tomorrow, the ridge persists over northern Tasmania, associated with the high sitting over the east of the mainland. North to northwesterly winds, shifting west to northwesterly during the day, and swells to two metres. A partly cloudy day for Hobart tomorrow, 12 the top, Richmond and Ouse both 13. Showers for Launceston and Devonport with a top of 12, Deloraine 10. Showers and 12 for Burnie and Strawn, showers on King Island also, Curry with a top of 13. St Helens and Swansea both partly cloudy and 13, White Mark 12. Looking ahead to next week now, Monday showers about the north and west extending statewide. Tuesday showers about the state with snow lowering to 700 metres during the evening and more statewide showers on Wednesday. Showers for Perth and Adelaide tomorrow, a sunny day for Darwin, Sydney and Brisbane and partly cloudy with a top of 13 for Melbourne. And here's a look at the current conditions around the state. Rach, I wish you a bonne fête nationale. Thank you for that, Britt. Appreciate it. Well, that's all your news for now. Thanks for joining us. We leave you with pictures from last night's Huon Valley Midwinterfest. See you tomorrow. Bye for now.